blessed day everyone today i am going to discuss one of the courses in the forensic science which is the lie detection techniques for the disclaimer all information and pictures that will be shown in the presentation are for general education purposes only all information are provided with good faith and i have no intention to own nor to claim it Lie detection techniques include the methods either scientific or traditional in determining whether a person is telling the truth. This does not confine to the use of polygraph but including other methods just to determine the factual truth. So what is really meant by lie detection? Lie detection is sometimes referred to as deception detection this is simply the system or practice of determining whether somebody is telling the truth during questioning or even during the interrogation or even during the interview lie detection techniques are used to determine a person's truthfulness and credibility through the consideration of certain behavioral and physiological cues as well as larger contextual and situational information. Because if you are a trained observer, you can actually observe the behavior and even emotion or demeanor of a person that you can determine whether he is or she is telling the truth. So, lie detection is also known as deception and truth verification. As scientific lie detection, it is now included as one area of forensic science. Forensic lie detection is better known in the academy as forensic psychophysiology. It is the most popular field of forensic psychophysiology is the polygraph method. It is a method that we will be discussing soon on how this instrument will be used during the questioning however as i mentioned earlier our subject will not only confine to the use of polygraph but also includes other methods on how to determine the truth from the person or using the physical evidence testimonies and the like according to dr william j yankee of the department of defense and polygraph institute polygraph examination is one of the most complex psychophysiological examinations ever developed in advanced countries the following are preferred description of lie detection through polygraph examination first is the pve the psychophysiological veracity examination second one is pdd psychophysiological detection of deception and the third one is the pca psychophysiological credibility assessment Line detection techniques, as I mentioned earlier, are used for detecting deception, determining the truth, and to reveal the truth. The purpose of these techniques are to reduce number of false 
of negative cases. This is also to avoid anyone to be accused of a certain crime that they had never had committed. As we have learned, it is better to let a thousand criminals to escape than to let a single innocent person to be put behind bars. However, the question is, there are some methods of detecting deception that could not be admissible or that will not be admissible as evidence in court. A good example is the polygraph examination result. You might be asking, in what is the purpose of this subject? The, ess the essence of this subject and significance for you and for the law enforcers will have strategies or even techniques on how to detect deception. It is only the polygraph examination is one that is not admissible as evidence in court. Yet, it can still be used for investigation. However, the polygraph examination result will not substitute investigation but will only serve as an aid of investigation as the case may be. Okay. Then polygraph examination result we also use for industries, especially when hiring applicants to determine whether the applicant is an honest person or they can also use during when there are reported cases or reported anomalies in the line of their in their line of their office let us talk later pertaining on the accuracy of the polygraph but this time let us talk about what are those possible methods or even techniques in detecting deception. So let us move on to the lesson one, truth and lies. So earlier discussion is just only an overview of this um, module. So lesson one, emphasize or emphasizes why do we seek truth what is the purpose why do we need to know the truth why not to ask yourself when something happened that you do not know and someone asks you or you are being accused of will you not going to know the truth what really happened why do you were why they are accusing you of a crime which you did not commit in order to answer all those questions we must know the truth and the truth will set you free isn't it Now, truth refers to the true information. Truth will only reveal when the true information is or are given. Truth is something factual or something that corresponds to fact or reality. It is an information derived from the event, from the uh, reality. It is not by hearsay. It is not by what others people say or what you have heard 
or because of traditions or even customs, truth derived from those factual event or even reality. It is not added event. It's not made exaggerated. But these are exactly as what really happened. Truth is also an obvious fact or something that is clearly true to it hardly needs to be stated. It is believable and convincing, supported by an evidence. It is not a conjecture. When we say conjecture, this, uh, these are uh, opinions that are not supported by an evidence. Truth is supported by an evidence that will go beyond doubt. Okay. Truth are supported by irrevocable or irrefutable information. Because these are informations derived from the reality. Truth is also something generally believed to be true, as I earlier mentioned, or as I mentioned earlier. You cannot tell something that is fictitious or will never exist and will never happen. These are not made opinionated. As I mentioned, these are not made hearsay. Or these are not hearsay. The purpose of seeking the truth will be based on decision making this is to provide a firm decision making this will provide irrefutable decision making that's the reason why we must know also the truth if you will never or if you don't know the truth or what really happened you cannot provide a good discernible decision making question is who will determine the truth the one who will determine the truth of course the seeker and the seeker we are referring to the investigator to the investigator on case Remember, or you have to accept the reality that our beloved earth is already covered with lies. So let us not be a part of those people who enjoy telling lies. Otherwise, you are only putting yourself living with sin. The reason why we must know the truth and a biblical principle for us to be set free. As, as the Bible says, the truth, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Free. Okay, so lies, there is still the truth behind that lies. Because the truth is only covered by lies. But if you will uncover or remove lies, the truth will prevail. 
Okay? Or the truth will appear. Okay? So that's the essence why we must know the truth. Let's say for example, you have committed a crime. The truth there is you committed a crime. You have violated the law. But because of you are not honest, you deliberately inform the police authorities that you did not or you are not the one who committed the crime. Therefore, the truth is only covered by, li by your lies. But if you will un uncover that lies, expect that truth will appear. In the investigation, the one that will uncover the truth is the investigator. Physical evidence, testimonies, and many more. So, in short, you cannot hide from your from the truth. As just you cannot hide your sin from God. So, what are lies and deceits? What is really the distinction between these two? Sometimes we even say to our friends, it's a lie or it is a deceit. Have you ever asked yourself if these two are the same? As just, is there, is flame the same as fire? Is flash drive is the same as USB? Is Xerox the same as photocopier? Those are things that we must need to know. So, lie is a falsehood or false statement. It could be either written or it could be oral. Lie is also a false impression. We can perceive that the information is not true. Lie refers to anything that deceives or creates a false impression. It could be something that gives a false or misleading impression with intent to deceive. In other words, it is an untruth or falsehood. Again, it could be either written or even oral. Therefore, deceit is an act of deceiving or misleading. So, lie is the false information where this false information coming from it is coming from the person and the person act, person's action is the deceit let's say for example i let you believe from what i given you or what i uh, information i given you so on my part I'm trying to deceive you. As a result, you believe. So what I did is a form of deceit. And that the information I given to you is considered a lie. Okay, so lie is a statement, a false information, false impression, but deceit is the act of deceiving or misleading other people using lies or using or through giving false information, false statement or even false impression. There are various methods of detecting lies in deceit. Lie detection methods available today 
may be grouped in four ways. First is the cross-checking information. Cross-checking information includes the testimony of the witnesses, including also the physical evidence. Physical evidence cannot lie. Only interpretation can err. Failure to hear its true testimony can deprive of its or can deprive it of its value. We all know that physical evidence will tell or reveal the truth, though physical evidence cannot speak. The problem is if the interpreter or the examiner made such it could be palpable mistake or because of negligence or erroneous it will hinders the physical evidence to reveal the truth so it always relies to the interpreter or the investigator on case likewise cross-checking information includes the other existing information like for example the personal information of the person through background check but of course this must be validated the testimony of witness physical evidence and other existing information considered during the determination of the veracity of the information of a certain person or, or a certain uh, yes certain information this must be validated before you can come up with a conclusion before you can come up with a decision you must validate all those so that you may know or you may come up with a good decision making with a good reasoning so validation may include direct investigation or you will be the one who will do the investigation this method or this direct investigation such as background checks interviews and the like are already used for making personal decisions both with and without the polygraph as accompaniment background checks is also to uh, validate the background checks and other investigative methods that have been used to identify individuals to validate information and many more the uh, second method of detecting deception is the psychological method which includes the evaluation of the emotional behavioral and cognitive reaction of a person generally speaking the research on detecting lies from behavior suggests that two broad families of behavioral clothes are likely to occur when someone is lying. Clothes related to liar's memory in thinking about what they are saying, which is the cognitive clause, and clothes related to liar's feeling and feeling about deception, which is emotional clothes. Because lies often involve faking emotions, focusing on emotions may help us detect lies. Instead, asking yourself, is this person lying? Ask yourself, what emotion is this person really feeling? A key factor to understanding our method to lie detection is realizing that lies often involve concealing our feelings. You might not even know that your classmate has crashed on you or something hiding from you that you don't want uh, you don't 
he don't want or she don't want you to know the truth. In particular, when we lie, we often trying to hide our real emotions. When you ask that person, are you okay? Yes, I mean, okay. But deep inside, he's not or she's not okay. We tell other people that we are sorry for our behavior when we are not. We say that we are disappointed. We miss their call when we are not. We pretend that we are happy to do something when really we are not. In other words, we lie about all sort of things, but lies often involve misrepresenting how we feel. You my, your classmate may say, may say, it's good to be single, but looking or during uh, when February 14 comes forth, he or she is sad because he has no partner. He has no date or she has no date for that date. Okay, do you think he's it is really happy to become single? That actually they are trying to hide what is the true feelings they are feeling inside. However, any data collected merely expose emotional clues that may or may not be related to deception. For example, sweetie palms during a job interview could indicate an interviewee's fear of being caught in a lie about their qualifications. Or when someone is interrogated. Okay, when we say interrogation, we are questioning the suspect. So when a suspect is under interrogation or during questioning, a person may try to conceal his emotion but cannot hide the effect of concealing or hiding of his or her emotion. Because sometimes there is, uh, you can observe the sweetie palms or even uh, you might observe the person is totally sweat because he don't want that the investigator or the person who is asking him or her could know or may know what really happened that he is the one or she is the one committed the crime. This happened only when you have done something wrong. You can feel worries or anxieties or even sweat if you are you really the one who committed the crime as i mentioned when you have done something wrong another method to detect deception is through interrogation what is the distinction between interrogation and interview interview you are asking the, wit the witness or the witnesses who saw what happened while interrogation you are asking the suspect or the suspect is one that is being questioned so during the interrogation you might observe or you might encounter the results of this psychological cues such as emotional behavioral you can able you can you might also observe the demeanor of the person you might also use it or as a basis whether a person is telling the truth and next of detecting deception is the lie detection instruments which we commonly known as polygraph as i mentioned earlier do not say polygraph machine because polygraph is already a machine the result of the polygraph is not admissible as evidence in court polygraph 
is only or the polygraph result or examination result is only an aid for investigation as i mentioned it however it will never be a substitute it will never substitute investigation the question is is this polygraph detects lie from the word itself lie detection the answer is no a polygraph does not detect truth or does does not detect lies or deception but polygraph only records the responses or the internal responses of a person during the questioning so it's the examiner to determine whether the person who is under the examination will interpret whether his or her response is a lie or is a truth aside from the uh, methods of detecting deception we have also the classifications that can be also used for detecting deception such as the what or the word association theory word association theory a test is a quick response asking the person that is answerable by yes or no only you will going to reveal or requiring a person to answer the question based on what comes first to his mind or to his or to her mind again it is a quick response thus time of response in relation to stimulus or non-stimulus words are important the person must not think or will not uh, will not think prolong otherwise the person is trying to make some alibi this is to avoid a person to think alibi if you are requiring the person to answer the question immediately isn't it when you are trying or when you are asked of a direct question pertaining of what you have done you can answer the question honestly but only in your mind but because if you don't want to be caught you will now cover the truth with lies you will now give alibi just to ensure that he will never quote you next is this pse or the psychological stress evaluation it is a response to a controlled situation when a person speaks there are audible voice and in audible frequencies when a person may try to hide the truth or trying to make some a story which it does not really exist making some alibi or because of fear there might be some changes on the tone of his or her voice because when a person is asked of a direct question relevant question he fears or she feel fear or anxiety that he might or she might be caught and when a person is at the stage state of anxiety or fear you can hear or you can observe the tone of his or her voice that but if you 
based uh, compared with those answers he had mentioned earlier on the questions that are irrelevant. A good example of irrelevant question is Is your name Romeo? Have you eaten your breakfast? But the relevant question is directly asking questions pertaining about the case. Are you the one who committed the crime? That is a good example of relevant question. And then the next one is the polygraph method. Or the polygraph as we had already discussed earlier. But that is only an overview of the polygraph. Okay. Next are the methods involving the use of substances that inhibit the inhibitor. First is the administration of truth serum. It's the person who was injected with the truth serum will make the person to tell the truth? The answer is no. It does not make someone to tell the truth. When a person was injected or administered with a truth serum will make only the person to give details of what he knows or what she knows. It forgets or it will disallow the person to give such alibis. But to give informations whether it could whether relevant or irrelevant, but what the people who administered truth serum to a person, all information coming from that person are true. This truth serum has a formula of iocyanide hydrobromide. As I mentioned earlier, it forgets his or her alibi. It will makes the person to provide and give all details of what he knows or what she knows. Next is the narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis. It has a formula of psychiatric sodium amital or sodium pentotal. So what could be the impact of this when a person is injected with this narcoanalysis or narcosynthesis. It will make the person feel depression. Isn't so it when a person can no longer withhold the problems he or she is suffering, he really wanted or she really wanted to tell it to somebody else, someone else. It could be his or her friends. He wants to talk everything or to tell everything. And when a person, isn't it, when a person brought everything what is trying to uh, put it on his or her own shoulder, it makes him or her feel better. You might um, might know someone else because I have my I have also a friend like that. Next is the intoxication with alcohol. In vino veritas and wine, there is truth. Are you amenable with that? Well, of course, depending on what volume of alcohol drink by a person of course when a person is totally drunk of course that person his mind or her mind could be impaired he does know what he is talking about or what he is talking about but if the person already reach the state of talkative the person might going to tell the truth or telling well, uh, the person might going to tell what his feeling or feelings or her feelings. 
to someone else or anything because of the alcohol now the question are these admissible as evidence in court the answer is no again you might be asking and now what is the essence why we are discussing this at least you may know what are those may considered and useful for investigation that can be also useful for court litigation if there are such instances that could not be used for court litigation perhaps it may help you for your investigation will you uh, you will have a lead or even idea to whom you, or what could be the best way to determine the truth or you might able to uh, it could be a helpful to determine whereabouts the suspect or to know the identity of the suspect. Next is the hypnosis or a hypnotic hypnotic induction. When a person is hypnotized, it's just like the person is being controlled by someone else. He will going to perform what the person who is hypnotizing him or her will instruct. So the question is, is this admissible as evidence in court? Of course, and definitely no. It could not be used and will never be used as evidence in court. Next is the scientific observation. It is not a merely observation, but you are making use or applying a scientific methods or approach in observing whether a person is telling the truth or lie. It could be supported by the use of other lie detection instruments such as iris scanner, the uh, brain uh, image scanner imaging and the like will this be admissible uh, as evidence of court in court the answer is it is not enough that will serve as the basis for deciding that the person is telling a lie or even telling the truth some techniques for detecting deception are based on the interpretation of subtle signals in behavior or demeanor of a person. Demeanor includes, among other things, gaze, posture, facial expressions, body movements, sound of the voice, and the patterns and content of speech when one person talks to another during an interview interrogation or any other conversation as i mentioned earlier it will not serve as a solely basis for deciding and adjudicating that the person is telling a lie or truth it will still rely on the available evidence next is the scientific interrogation of course you may also still apply ad, among others techniques using also the brain scanner imaging iris uh, verifier and among others scientific observation will only ad come up with a perception while scientific interrogation is an approach of rigid questioning of the suspect using other scientific approaches we have also here the sophisticated techniques that can also detect deception first is the computerized voice stress analyzer it is 
a uh, software programs that are designed to measure changes in voice patterns caused by the stress, which was earlier mentioned, or the physical effort or trying to hide deceptive responses. As I earlier men as I uh, mentioned earlier, when a person is could be at the state of the moment that the interrogator or the investigator may now reveal the truth, the person may have the state of anxiety and perhaps will make his tone of voice different from his earlier tone of voice. This computerized voice stress analyzer interprets changes in vocal patterns and indicate on a graph whether the subject is being deceptive or even truthful. Of course, there are many programs or softwares that were made, however, with the same concept that is to detect the tone of voice of a person by reason of determining the truthfulness of a person. Another sophisticated technique is the brain scanning that the functional magnetic resonance imaging has something to do with the brain scanning. This functional magnetic resonance imaging does not directly identify the neural signature of a lie which does not read minds and determine whether a person's memory in fact contains something other than what he or she says it does. Thus, it, this technique can only become an, an aid for uh, investigation or even for the solving civil suits or even other cases as just like the polygraph result. Well, unlike polygraph tests, iris identification or some may say I detect uses no cables or sensors. The test is automated, requiring no examiner, and the results are determined by a computer algorithm. Any movement from your eyes may record will be recorded by this program or even software. That because when a person may telling a lie, there might be some changes or even uh, the movement or some irregular movement of his or her eyes. As just like when a person is asked with a relevant question, the person might going to uh, look at on his left side, perhaps the person is uh, thinking of alibi. When a person is looking at the right side, the person may tell the truth. Well, of course, depending on the program, depending on the uh, features or even settings set on the program. Of course, the examples I just mentioned to you is just only what the uh, other sets of method of determining uh, a person uh, truthfulness through observation. So that is the uh, end for the lesson one. So here is our topics for the next week, which is the lesson two entitled Lie Detection and Psychology. I do hope we can see each other. Stay tuned and stay blessed always. So that ends 
my presentation today. I do hope that you have learned a lot and you have took down notes. So I um, may I just leave you with a verse. Philippians 4 verse 19. My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And here.